Welcome back to the main ballroom. I hope you guys enjoyed the roundtable sessions downstairs. As I mentioned this morning, you guys are the star of the show, and uh, I think those, the roundtable sessions really highlighted that. It, I, um, hopeful that it was meaningful and, and impactful for you all to hear from each other, learn from each other best practices and uh, success stories, lessons learned so that we can all grow as an industry in Georgia and uh, support our shippers here uh, in this great state, in this great economy here in the Southeast. Um, for those of you who were in the manufacturing session, uh, you might have seen the Georgia Manufacturing Alliance uh, information over to the side. Um, they have a manufacturing directory that I think would be potentially useful to you. Um, we also have a Georgia Tech Manufacturing Extension Program. So if there's any uh, manufacturers in the room that are looking for some additional assistance in tweaking their supply chain, uh, as well as the um, operations within the plant, our Georgia Tech Manufacturing Extension Program would be a great resource uh, for some expertise and, and assistance there, um, particularly uh, in uh, lean manufacturing, but all sorts of other uh, aspects of uh, manufacturing in Georgia that are a great resource. That's the Georgia Tech Manufacturing Extension Program. Um, and I would like to, uh, for our final session of the day, before we get started, I would love to do some thank yous to our sponsors. Uh, Vestra Logistics provided our lanyards to today and tomorrow. Uh, Centerpoint and the Department of Economic Development's Workforce Development Division for our printed programs. Coastal Logistics Group for our bags. And yes, this is the lucky winner of the Savannah Vacations in here. Thank you to CLG for that. SunTrust for the water bottles. Thank you uh, for your support there. And uh, Flex uh, Warehousing is supporting uh, your hydration in those bottles with the water bubblers today. So thank you to Flex. Um, I also want to thank Manhattan Associates for the mobile app today. Are you guys using the mobile app? How's that going? Good? Oh, there you go. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad that's useful. The, the main thing is that you all are, are here and able to enhance and grow your business uh, and, and your partnerships with each other. So we hope that mobile app is helping. Um, in fact, uh, I want to switch on to the, um, another of our sponsors today for this whole summit uh, is Norfolk Southern. And I'd love to, to show a little video, a little word from our sponsors. You guys might recognize this video uh, from uh, TV commercials. I, I always love seeing this come across, uh, come across the screen. Big day? How the usual. Move some new cars. All a bunch of steel. Kept the supermarket shelves stocked. Made sure everyone got their latest gadgets. What's up for the next shift? Uh, nothing much. Just keeping the lights on. <laughs> nice. Doing the big things that move an economy. Let's see you tomorrow, Maggie. See you tomorrow, Sam. Just another day at Norfolk Southern. Let's go. Thank you, Norfolk Southern, for your support and uh, for representing our industry so well to the general public. That's great. I'm going to move on to uh, another important thing for us uh, in the Logistics Network, uh, American Logistics Aid Network. Uh, for those of you who have not heard of this, this is an organization that corrals the logistics that are needed in response to uh, emergencies and disasters around the world. Uh, we know that we, we've had some flooding, some big flooding, uh, historic flooding going on in Houston right now uh, and in Ecuador. We're awaiting some firms, for some firm requests. We don't know exactly what those uh, needs are at this point, but uh, we anticipate that we're going to need uh, transportation warehousing in Texas, U.S.-based transportation to, uh, for air cargo to uh, Ecuador, as well as on the ground transportation warehousing materials handling in Ecuador. This would be a great way to do some corporate social responsibility, um, help out and, and get engaged uh, and show how logistics really makes a difference when lives are on the line. So I would encourage you to go to Alan's logistics map uh, to pledge your support. And once you sign up there, you'll get more information as those more specific requests come in. Uh, that's American Logistics Aid Network. Okay, great. I want to talk with you for just a moment before we do the drawing. I'm giving you guys out in the, in the corridor some more time to get in before we do the drawing. And while I do that, I want to tell you about the, the Department of Economic Development. So as uh, 
this is the best agency to work in in state government. Uh, our job is to grow jobs for Georgians, and it is the best job in state government. We get to help about a thousand companies every year in all sorts of things that they need to come here, do business, and grow business uh, in Georgia. Site selection, workforce development, financing options, attracting suppliers, and international trade. And the, the Centers of Innovation is part of this integrated approach of the Department of Economic Development. With our other centers of innovation, uh, we work with private industry that is here in Georgia to expand innovation in connection with our, our higher ed institutions and bring that commercialization to the marketplace, help companies who are already working uh, in Georgia to uh, be more innovative and connect with each other at events like the summit. Uh, and we provide technical industry expertise and, and collaborative research. So in, the, in our main industries, logistics, of course, is, is, is the um, logistics centers puts on this summit. We also have manufacturing, aerospace, agribusiness, energy, and information technology centers that do work with Georgia companies. So if you're in any of those industries, I encourage you to go to georgia.org. Georgia spelled out dot org to learn more about the resources of the Department of Economic Development and the Centers of Innovation. Another aspect of the uh, economic development successes that we have in this state is being on the ground with our local communities. And we do that also part of the Georgia Department of Economic Development is the Georgia Economic Developers Association. These are the industry professionals. I know there's many of you in the room who are affiliated with Georgia Economic Developers Association. Uh, Kevin Shea, I'm going to welcome you to the stage, uh, to, uh, who's going to moderate our panel today. Uh, Kevin is the um, president of Georgia Economic Developers Association, and these are the guys that really make the difference when, it's, when it really comes down to site selection and getting the infrastructure and the energy access that companies need to build a plant or grow a plant. These, uh, the Georgia Economic Developers Association, GEDA, uh, are the ones who make the difference on the ground and, and really um, make the difference uh, for all of us in bringing jobs here. So, George, so Kevin, welcome to the stage. Thank you very much. All right. So you get to do the drawing for right. uh, the lucky, lucky winner today. Um, I appreciate you guys for participating in the, the lunch discussions. I hope it was meaningful and helpful to you today to make uh, some connections and, and learn about uh, the way others are tackling our mutual problems. So Kevin, would you do the honors? All right. All right. All right. Josh Harshman, PLP Logistics. Josh, are you in the room? He's there in the is. room. Yeah. Congratulations. Come on up. Okay. Okay. Keep him. All right. Kevin, I'm going to turn over the uh, microphone to you here and let you introduce our fine panelists today. Congratulations, Josh. It's a pleasure to be here today. I'd like to make a personal uh, plug for your logistics aid network. I happen to know somebody who was killed in the, uh, in the uh, earthquake down in uh, Ecuador. And it's a very remote area. It's very difficult to get assistance there. So anything that can be done from a logistics standpoint to help out would be very much appreciated. So certainly glad to hear about that. Here today to introduce the panel that will be talking about what's new and next in Georgia. First of all, I'd like to introduce Chris Carr, who's the commissioner of the Georgia Department of Economic Development. As I'll call your name, come on up here and sit down if you don't mind, Chris. Chris was named commissioner of the Georgia Department of Economic Development by Governor Nathan Deal in November 2013. As commissioner, he leads the state agency responsible for creating jobs and investment in Georgia through business recruitment and expansion, international trade and tourism, as well as the arts, film, and music industries. Prior to join, joining GDEC, as we call it, Carr was chief of staff for Senator Johnny Isaacson, and Carr began his career with Georgia Pacific, moving on to practice law at least for a couple of days with Alston and Byrd, and then serving as uh, vice president general counsel for the Georgia Public Policy Foundation. Chris graduated from the University of Georgia's Terry College of Business and the Lumpkin School of Law. He lives in Dunwoody and has a daughter, Mary Clifton. Please join me in welcoming Chris Carr.
Next we have Stacy Watson. Stacy is, is the general manager for economic and industrial development with the Georgia Ports Authority, or GPA. And Stacy joined GPA in 1992 and has held numerous positions during his tenure. Prior to becoming general manager of economic and industrial development, Stacy held various management positions within GPA to include marketing, container operations, and ship operations. Stacy earned his AS in business administration from Middle Georgia College in Cochrane, Georgia, and his Bachelor of Business Administration in Marketing with an emphasis on logistics and intermodal transportation from Georgia Southern University. He earned a Master's of Business Administration from Webster University in Savannah. Stacy holds the rank of Major in the Georgia Air National Guard, 165th Airlift Wing in Garden City, Georgia, and serves as Commander of the Aircraft Maintenance Operations Flight. Please join me in welcoming Stacy Watson. Stacy, sir, thank you for your service. And next we have Brant Herndon. Brant is Vice President Business Development with the Savannah Economic Development Authority, or CEDA. Brant had joined uh, Savannah Economic Development Authority several years ago. He's responsible for the development and implementation of marketing and business development action plans to attract prospects to Savannah as well as retention, expansion, and creation of additional prospects and projects. Brant was previously the president and CEO of the Fayette County Development Authority, the lead development agency for Fayette County. Before that, he was executive vice president of Apple Realty, where he was responsible for sales, leasing, property management, and development. Herndon's experience also includes four years with the Department of Economic Development, GDEC, and four years with Electric Cities of Georgia, where he served as manager of economic development. A native of Macon, Georgia, Brant holds a bachelor's in finance from the University of Georgia and a master's of business from Georgia State University and is certified as an economic development finance professional. Please join me in welcoming Brant Herndon. And last and certainly not least is Trolls Adrian, who is the director of supply chain and advanced manufacturing for the Metro Atlanta Chamber of Commerce, or MAC. Trolls joined the Metro Atlanta Chamber in January 2015 as Director of Supply Chain and Advanced Manufacturing. In this role, he leads the industry expansion team's initiatives in the supply chain and advanced manufacturing clusters as part of MAC's economic development team. Previously, he worked for the Gwinnett Chamber in its economic development division, where he served as Senior Project Manager for Advanced Manufacturing and Supply Chain Management. He also worked in Copenhagen, Denmark, as the Danish National Police and Information a Copenhagen-based daily newspaper. Before that, he worked in the finance and operations department for one of New York City's largest social service nonprofits, CAMBA, leading organization-wide budgeting and financial projects. Trolls earned his undergraduate degree in political science from the University of Copenhagen and a master's degree in public administration from Baruch College in City of New University of New York. In 2010, he earned a master's degree, a second master's degree from Georgia Tech in city and regional planning. While at Georgia Tech, he earned the 2010 Ed McClure Award given by the Association of Collegiate Schools of Planning for the best master's level city planning research paper in the United States and Canada. Please join me in welcoming Adrian Trolls. And hopefully you can hear us, yeah, it sounds like you can, uh, fairly well over here. Want to uh, begin this panel and thank everybody for participating, really appreciate that, by asking a question of all of our panelists. And that is to describe your role that each of your organization plays in the growing Georgia's economy and business prospects. What is your approach and what do you offer clients? And we'll start with Chris, if you don't mind. All right, thanks, Kevin. As Janine said, our job is very simple at the Georgia Department of Economic Development, and that's to bring jobs and investment to our state. And the way that Governor Deal has tasked us is to really, again, as Janine mentioned, take an integrated approach. And that is through our, our seven or eight different divisions. How do we leverage the opportunities that we have around the state in order to find that next job and that next dollar of investment? And we do that through business recruitment, uh, through existing industry expansion, through international trade, through workforce, our centers of innovation of which Janine is the director of the Center of Innovation for Logistics, as you all know uh, very, very well. 
but we also do it through uh, tourism and entertainment and the Georgia Council for the Arts. And so we've got to be able to make the business case for a company to locate in our state, to continue to grow in our state, but there has to be something else. There has to be a greater experience. And that is, there has to be something for employees to have, to, to do when they're not at work. Great place to live, a place that you want to be. And so we take great pride at the, at the department making sure that we work, uh, again, with companies to make sure we find that next dollar of investment, that next job, and do what it takes to be uh, successful. And one of the things that, that we're very, very proud of is our Center of Innovation for logistics, which really does a number of different things, but one is subject matter expertise. As we're working with companies uh, that are manufacturing in Georgia, that are shipping in Georgia, that are distribution hubs in our state, you're working from a subject matter expertise to make it uh, a better experience, but also the relational, you know, working with our sister agencies, working with local communities, working with the private sector uh, in order to find solutions. And we're very, very proud because the centers of innovation are unique to the state of Georgia. We are in six different strategic in, uh, areas, and it's leveraging the experience that we have at the university system, as well as economic develop in order to, uh, economic development in order really to, to help small and mid-sized firms uh, become more efficient. So we're very, very proud of what we do, and hopefully we can uh, work with those of you in this room uh, to be successful as well. Stacy. Well, I'd like to first um, start out with telling you a little bit about our organization uh, with the Georgia Ports Authority. Uh, we've got two uh, terminals or two facilities. We've got the Port of Savannah, Port of Brunswick. Port of Savannah consists of two terminals. You've got the Garden City Terminal, which is the number four container port in the nation. Uh, we uh, move about 3.8 million TEUs uh, per year. Uh, we have the capacity and the capability to move about six and a half million TEUs per year, all on a 1,200 acre footprint. We are the largest single container terminal in North America. Uh, we put a lot of investment into that facility. We see a lot of growth potential in that facility, um, not just for Savannah, but for the entire state as an economic engine. Also at the Port of Savannah, we have Ocean Terminal, which is a 200-acre multi-purpose facility. It's right at the end of River Street, right underneath the Talmadge Bridge. Uh, we handle a lot of project cargo, uh, row-row freight, uh, brake bulk freight. We've got two gantry cranes there that are dockside. We also have a 500 short ton capacity uh, barge mounted crane there for handling big, high and heavy pieces, which in my opinion is just as important to the economic development of the state, having that multimodal capability right there in Savannah, right there in your backyard. Also at the Port of Brunswick, we have three facilities. We've got uh, three deep water facilities. We've got Colonel's Island Terminal, which is actually the number two automotive facility, automotive terminal in the United States after Baltimore. We've also got Marine Port Terminal, which we lease out to a third party. We also have a uh, Mayor's Point facility, which is uh, specifically there for export of brake bulk freight. And my position within the Georgia Ports Authority as General Manager of Economic Development and my contribution is that I work with the Georgia Department of Economic Development. I work with all of our statewide partners in the utilities, our other transportation partners in attracting jobs and investment into uh, the state of Georgia. I get involved when there's a, 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 a project or our team gets involved when there's an import or an export component and that's how we add value to the team. We add value to that prospect. Right. Right. Similar, similar to, to Chris's comments about what is it that CETA does, I mean, our, our goal and our initiatives are to create jobs and create capital investment. So how do we do that? Um, in the four years I've been there, we kind of branched out in our initiatives and doing some creative things. Um, you know, we have our traditional economic development, which is business attraction, which is uh, uh, business retention and expansion. But uh, I'm limited in uh, my recruitment efforts of companies and uh, I can only recruit within the Chatham County line. I can only offer incentives and, and attract companies. So in a lot of sense, uh, most development authorities, that's what they do. But you know what we've done differently in the last couple of years, four, about five years ago, we bought a license to the World Trade Center Savannah. And that's something that's been very successful for, with CETA. Uh, it's an international business network, and there's over 300 offices in over 100 com uh, com uh, countries. Matter of fact, our CEO is over in Algiers right now at the uh, World Trade Center 
uh, annual meeting. But what this is is a regional organization, and it helps businesses on the coastal on the coastal uh, region to help them export their goods, finds opportunity to sell goods overseas, um, and it also allows us to branch out and form networks with other development authorities. As a matter of fact, there's over about 15 development authorities that are members of World Trade Center, so it gives uh, CETA, or the traditional economic development, it gives us opportunities to work together on a regional platform, which I think is very important when it comes to economic development. So our third initiative that we've uh, branched out is we had the Foreign Trade Zone 104 that uh, was over at the Savannah Airport Commission, it's now housed at CETA, and that, we serve 16 counties on the coast uh, for the Foreign Trade Zone opportunities. And the fourth initiative is uh, we're, we're trying to get approved to be an EB-5 regional center. So we're beginning to see some EB-5 projects that are um, that are interested in talking to us about some opportunities there. And then the last one is we've embarked on a film initiative in the last year, and the film's got a, of a lot of press lately, uh, you reading about it in the paper, and so CETA decided it's something that we needed to do. So we're now um, offering incentives to, to try to entice companies to come to Savannah, come to Chatham County, to film movies uh, or TV series or even post-production. So it gives us an opportunity to look at economic development in a lot of different ways as opposed to just traditional economic development. Thank you, Brant. Controls? So uh, the Metro Atlanta Chamber is uh, unique, at least on stage here, that, that we are a, a fully private sector organization. Uh, so we have as our mission to grow the region's economies. We cover the Metro Atlanta area as defined by the U.S. Census Bureau, uh, which is a 29 county area stretching from the, the Alabama line to, uh, in, in the west to, to Barrow County in the, in the uh, in northeast, uh, down to Lamar, Butts County in the, in the south, uh, and then all the way up to Bartow County in the north. So it's a pretty big, pretty big region. Um, and as a, as a chamber, uh, we, of course, take a, uh, we take a relationship approach to everything we do. Uh, and so our approach to economic development, uh, and, and indeed everything else we do, we also work in public policy, of course. We have uh, innovation and entrepreneurship efforts. We, we're the, uh, the uh, initiators of, of the Choose ATL movement that some of you all may have heard of. Um, but everything we do, we do through partners. It's, it's simply not, not uh, possible for, for, uh, for an organization like ours to do what we do without very, very strong partnerships. So we, uh, we form partnerships with, with organizations uh, within our region, outside of our region, like the Georgia Ports Authority, very importantly, uh, work very symbiotically with, with partners in Savannah as well. Um, with, within our economic development team, as, as uh, Kevin mentioned, I sit on what's called the industry expansion team, which is a group of of, uh, of uh, folks that work uh, in an ecosystem approach to, to, uh, to ex expansion of clusters of industries. Um, there I manage what we call the supply chain ecosystem, <laughs> which basically involves any company that is directly uh, involved in the production or movement of physical product or is sort of a first order removed from that. So it could be, for example, a supply chain software company. Um, in, in terms of how we work projects, since we're a private organization, we do not in, in in any way get involved in any type of incentives or financial direct assistance to companies. So what we bring to the table as an economic development group is our relationships both nationally and internationally uh, and inside the region uh, and make sure that the right people meet the, uh, at the right time uh, and, and at the right place. Uh, so that's how we support projects, simply bring the private sector to the table to help, for example, a prospect uh, convince, uh, convince a prospect that it's a, it's a great idea to be, be in Atlanta or indeed in the state of Georgia, because we always we begin every conversation with the Georgia approach. Um, so I, I would say that's, that's, that's our general approach to economic development. We have a very, very, uh, very strong economic development team, we have great partners in, within our region uh, that we work together with, both locally, every local economic development organization, as well as our partners at the state and, and at the utilities. Thank you, Trolls, and thank you all panelists. And just so everyone has an idea, how we're going to approach this. I have a number of questions here, but if you have any questions yourself, you can put those on the app, submit those, and Janine will tabulate those and be able to bring those to us toward the end of the program. And I know we, we are the ones that are standing between you and a beverage at the end of this program, so uh, I, I see that we have enough time to go past by, but we'll try to do our best uh, to keep you, keep you active and interested. I have another question for all of the panelists, and uh, maybe can do this uh, as well in the same same type of uh, format. 
What major business expansions or company locations have you been involved in over the past year, particularly since last year's summit? And use specific company examples where possible and discuss impact statewide where applicable. Chris? Uh, sure, Kevin. We, we've had a, a tremendous amount of success uh, over the last year, uh, fiscal year since the last summit. There's been a lot of activity. Uh, we're very fortunate in the state of Georgia that project activity remains high, and we've had a lot of, uh, of, of successes. Let me give you some numbers that since the last time uh, we gathered at the summit, since last, since last year's summit in the state of Georgia, we've been a part of 313 announcements working with companies to create 12,510 jobs and $4.3 billion worth, worth of investment. Now, to break these numbers down further, particularly as it relates to this particular summit, 74% of these location and expansion announcements were by companies whose business is logistics enabled, such as manufacturing, food processing, automotive, aerospace, uh, and, and, and similar industries. All of these companies require inbound and or outbound logistics to make their businesses work, and $221 million worth of the total investment by these companies uh, will be providing logistics service. So it's been absolutely fantastic. And if you're looking at, at, at kind of what uh, examples of uh, uh, some of the companies that we've had, uh, some of the, the bigger ones from around the state, and we've been very, very fortunate. We, we, we certainly have had a lot of success in Metro Atlanta, and we're very, very proud of that. But we have around the state as well. For example, in Augusta, Textron Specialized Vehicles, also known as EasyGo uh, Golf Carts, announced 400 jobs, a $49 million investment in Augusta. Uh, Norfolk Southern Corporation announced 284 IT jobs, investing $55 million uh, in Fulton County. Uh, on the food processing front, National Beef Packing Company announced 233 jobs and $9 million worth of investment in Colquitt. Uh, another manufacturing, Jindal Polyfilms announced 243 jobs and $205 million worth of investment in Troop County. So you're seeing all across the state we have had success. Uh, again, all, the logistics industry, distribution, critically important to what we do, and it's critically important to how we market the state of Georgia. And companies know that there is a world-class logistics network in this state that we're very, very proud of and proud to work with our partners on as well. Very good, Chris. Thank you. Okay, from um, our standpoint, we talk a lot about jobs and about investment. But, you know, I work for a port, so I'm, I'm, I care about freight as well. So every project is important. That brings additional freight across our dock. But every now and then there's one that kind of sticks out in your mind as a, a real winner. Um, I was fortunate enough to work um, uh, with Ms. Hannah Mullen. She is the Department uh, the, the Development Authority Executive in Candler County to attract a company called um, CPE America. It's a company out of Australia that imports concrete pump trucks, I mean the big ones, that can reach 200 feet in the air and pump concrete. Mm. And they're importing Korean-made pump trucks. So you've got an Australian company uh, that's coming in to, to service and distribute Korean-made companies, a double whammy, in Metter, Georgia, a small community. Um, and that company actually located in a 46,000 square foot spec building that had been vacant for 26 years, I believe. Yes. So that made us feel uh, really proud. Um, and eventually that could mean more manufacturing I and mean, you have to look at the potential for this project. Not a lot of freight to start out with, but the potential for manufacturing more assembly in a small town like Metter, I mean, that's a huge economic impact for an area that's outside of the Savannah market. Um, as I said, eventually it'll expand into manufacturing. Um, we've assisted that company with many things. One of the things that we do at the port is we help those companies with any logistics issues that they may have along with the Logistics Innovation Center. Um, I mean, I went out and did things on the terminal for, for the president of that company, uh, checking VIN numbers. He was not um, accustomed to the way we do business here in, um, in Georgia, well actually in the United States in every opportunity, he said, how, he told us how much better it was in Australia and I was like, no, wait, wait, we just have to work through the process. Um, and I've worked with him until he was comfortable 
um, uh, with dealing with, 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 with our way of, of doing business in the state of Georgia at the Port of Savannah. That's a very successful project with a lot of potential, and there will actually be a ribbon cutting for that project on May the 5th of, 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 of you know, just got the text, so that's, uh, that's coming up soon. They say lightning doesn't strike twice in the same place, but you know, I'm gonna keep bragging on uh, Candler County and Metter, Georgia. Uh, they had a 220,000 square foot building that was vacated by a manufacturer, and they lost about 150 jobs. That's a huge hit for a small community. Um, I worked through a broker um, uh, that actually had a, a, a company that manufactured paint supplies and uh, uh, brushes and rollers, uh, a supplier for a lot of the retail industry that we've built up over the years in the state of Georgia in the Savannah industry. Uh, that company came in, looked at the building, didn't need a lot of work, fell in love with the community, um, and they announced about 200 jobs uh, recently, I think it was probably October of last year, October, November, and um, they're actually bringing about 2,000 containers, additional containers through the port. So that is a, 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 a double whammy. Um, also, I'm trying to convince Ms. Mullins in, 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 in Metter that she needs to put up another spec building, but after 26 <laughs> years with an empty spec building, that's gonna be a, a, a difficult task. Um, and one other, if I may, we, um, we recently had an expansion announcement for um, Nordic Cold Storage. Uh, my friend Ross Maple is in the audience somewhere. Um, uh, they are actually, they, they built a 200,000 square foot cold storage, a blast freeze facility um, in Savannah, uh, which is in direct support to the poultry industry that, that is up in North Georgia and up in Middle Georgia. So you see that port impact stretching all along Georgia's 159 counties, especially with this project for a top export commodity at the port. And the, the exciting thing, well, it was exciting that they chose to locate in Savannah, take advantage of our infrastructure, of the resources that we have, but recently they chose to expand uh, to another, by another 200,000 square feet. Wow. So um, uh, that's a testament to, you know, to doing business in Georgia. It's a testament to you know, our state leadership, the port leadership, that a company can actually choose a location choose to be in the Savannah area, choose to do business in Georgia, and then, to, and then gain the need to expand. So, you know, we've had a lot of success stories, but those are three that kind of stick out in my mind over the last three years. Very good, Stacy. thank you. And Brant, you wanna share with us? Yeah, well, since Stacy brought up the, the paint company, it was interesting is they actually looked in Savannah, <laughs> and, and so that one, that one kind of hurts, but just to show you how economic development hits close to home is yep. my brother-in-law has actually worked at that plant that got shut down, and he lost his job. And I'm hoping, and he's hoping that he'll get hired on with his new company. So it just goes to show that the efforts of economic development can affect us all personally. So, um, so when it comes to since the last year, since the last summit, uh, CETA has been involved in 12 projects, which amounts to about 70 million in capital investment and about 400 jobs. And I want to stress and make sure when we say we're involved, I don't want to think that people think we're taking credit. We yeah. hopefully had a small part of, uh, of these locations. Um, when it comes to projects in Savannah, we like to track you know, where the projects are coming from, about 30 to 40 percent, probably closer to 40 percent. We work with the port on, either maybe the port's the lead and they bring us in, or maybe we were, uh, the first phone call came to us and then we call Stacy and John and, and we start working projects that way. So it's always a team effort. In almost every project that we work on, uh, we have a state project manager from Chris's department who's involved and in, in typically a utility partner too. So it's always a team effort. So just want to make sure that right. we're not taking undue credit. But so to kind of give you a little bit of the flavor of uh, some of the projects we've had success with since uh, the last summit, I'll, I'll mention some that are that have a logistics uh, slant to it and some of them are not. Uh, Own Brand 24, which is a call center project. We work call centers, uh, 30 jobs that were created there. Is an, that was an expansion. Also Blue Force Gear, another local company, uh, entrepreneur started the company, makes uh, military gear. That was a $3 million expansion with about 50 jobs. And also another uh, local company that um, expanding sweetener solutions, about two and a half million dollars in capital investment, about 30 jobs. So, 
So when it comes to um, working projects, some of them are small, some of them are large, but when it comes to the logistics, since last year, OA uh, Logistics bought um, some property over at Northport, and um, they're building a, over a million square foot facility, which will be about a $50 million investment and over 200 jobs. Um, Safavia, a company is doing a 500,000 square foot build of suit, $28 million building, 100 jobs. Of course, they'll be using the port. Um, port Logistics recently just moved out of a 100,000 square foot facility into a 315,000 square foot facility over at Center Point. It was a spec building that quickly got leased up by Port Logistics. And then um, Nordic, which Stacy already mentioned, a 200,000 square foot expansion. And then Bram Industries, which is an Israeli company, um, it's a manufacturing company, plastic injection molding. Um, they're going to create 60 jobs and $5 million in capital investment. So we've had some a little success with manufacturing, some success with call centers, local companies expanding, and then some nice port projects. But we realize that with the logistics, these, these um, companies are going to come with with CETA and without CETA, and we're just glad to be a part of it. Thank you, Brant. I uh, appreciate that. And Trolls? So <clears throat> we have uh, seen an interesting trend over the, over the past year um, in, in terms of the, the projects that, that we have worked. And, and I want to echo what everybody else has been saying on the panel. Economic development, for, for those of you all who are not in, in, in that game here in the room, is, is a true team sport. And uh, we uh, are proud to be able to support a lot of projects, um, and very rarely are we out in front of them. Um, so I want to say that before I mention any of the projects we're involved in. We, we like to take a bit of a behind-the-scenes approach on a lot of them. But um, the, the, the three I would li like to begin, uh, uh, like to highlight here are, of course, last year. This was prior to last year's lo uh, logistics summit, but uh, still uh, important enough, I think, to bring up again. Of course, is the relocation of the Mercedes-Benz USA headquarters to. To, uh, to eventually Sandy Springs, uh, which is going to create 950 jobs and also represents one of the most important brand relocations um, in recent memory for, for our region and state. Um, CSM Bakery, uh, a, a baked goods uh, company, uh, moved their global headquarters uh, to Metro Atlanta last year as well. And then Intelligrated decided to locate their software headquarters, Intelligrated, one of the, uh, the largest uh, material handling integrators in the world, decided to locate their software headquarters in, in Milton um, and in, in uh, North Fulton County. And so why am I bringing those three up? Uh, when they're not distribution center projects, um, but I think they highlight an important trend that we're really seeing in our region, and that is the supply chain sector broadly is becoming technology driven versus technology enabled. And Metro Atlanta is a very unique ecosystem for that type of company. Um, all these three companies had supply chain reasons for locating. They may have had others. Uh, of course, Mercedes Benz, great business climate, uh, great place to raise a family, uh, great access to customers around the world and around the country. But it was also a play in terms of being close to their production facilities and, and parts distribution. And of course, the fact that we are a, a fast growing uh, region of the country, the Southeast as a whole. Um, so in many ways, the supply chain sector today looks a lot what the, like what the technology sector looked like in the, uh, in the 90s and maybe it's back in the 80s, sort of ripe for disruption and sort of driven by this ecosystem approach where companies are beginning to realize that walled gardens must come down, collaboration needs to happen. Um, there is a lot of upstarts, and you're hearing from a lot of them uh, at this logistics summit, a lot of upstarts and startups that are really disrupting what's going on in, in logistics and supply chain. So um, very excited to see that that trend has, has hit Atlanta, uh, Metro Atlanta, and, and we're excited to, to, to see it continuing. We, we're, we've got more like those in the hopper. Um, the final one I just wanted to throw in there, it was not a, it was not a huge location of any kind, um, but uh, last year Paramount opened, uh, the, the film company opened a, uh, a small distribution center in Clayton County called Paramount on Location, which is a distribution facility for grip and lighting and other equipment. And I think that's a really, really interesting uh, thing to see because I think it might actually represent uh, part of that trend that I know that our partners at the Department of Economic Development has really been pushing for in the governor's office in terms of uh, bringing more value-added services in the, in, the, in the movie industry to our, to our state. Uh, and that, if that's an early sign of that, I think that's really, really exciting. And I do believe it is. So, so just thought I would throw that one in there. 
Very good, Trolls. Thank you. And uh, I have another question here, primarily for Stacy first, and then the rest of the panel can jump in if it's appropriate. And that is that Area Development Magazine, according to them, more than 85% of companies making location decisions are based on logistics-related factors. Mm -hmm. How many of those growing businesses that you worked with recently chose Georgia because of our logistical advantages? And what advantages are most obvious? Uh, and which ones are maybe more nuanced or less well-known or understood? Hmm. For the projects that I work and the industry that I'm in, 100% would be, you know, have some type of logistical um, um, component. Um, uh, 100% because the state's logistical advantages, um, um, our ocean carrier services, uh, our vessel services covering the world. Uh, we've got 38 weekly, regularly scheduled vessel calls in Savannah. It gives a prospect or a customer that um, um, reliability uh, factor, that, um, uh, that there's consistent and competitive service in Savannah, um, our investment in our terminals, uh, we, our customers and prospects want to see that we have the wherewithal to grow along with their projected or along with their anticipated growth. Uh, so the investments that we've made in our terminal, uh, we spent almost a billion dollars over the last 10 years and we expect to spend almost two billion dollars over the next 10 years for equipment upgrades, for IT upgrades, for, uh, for, for, for uh, uh, birth enhancements. So all that together, Georgia, the, 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 the State Department of Transportation's investment in our roadways and our highways, all that comes together to form a complete picture that Georgia is very, very serious about logistics. Georgia's very serious about infrastructure. Um, the state's leadership, uh, the state's vision, uh, willingness to invest in Georgia's infrastructure, definitely a top priority, something that we sell uh, uh, very hard uh, uh, when we're talking to prospects. Um, the least nuanced, or one of the things that most people don't realize, even on the logistics side, is the quality of life, I would say. Um, aside from the business decision uh, to locate a project, uh, the, prospect, the prospect must actually like the community that they're actually looking at. Uh, they've got to feel comfortable that the community wants them there. Uh, they've got to have places for, you know, restaurants for their kids to go or activities for their kids to go do after school. Uh, they've got to have activities for themselves. They've got to have a good education system. And once a project has narrowed down to two or three different locations, the business factors are pretty, you know, well vetted and they're pretty even. You know, and it's usually that quality of life factor that will sway. If, they, if, if there's no clear winner, there's usually that quality of life factor that will sway one community or one state versus another. Okay, very good. Thank you, Stacy. Mm -hmm. Anybody else want to add to that? Well, I, I'd, I'd just say, you know, our manufacturing projects that we work, obviously our mm -hmm. distribution, I mean, how often it's, you know, access to the port. Right. It's, we need to rail, uh, you know, a, a, a rail access on a site, um, access to uh, our highways, whatever it may be. So, and again, I think that really does separate us from a lot of states, the fact that we have this infrastructure and then, right. and then no matter what the industry is, again, having Hartsfield Jackson International Airport in your backyard mm -hmm. um, and, and access to, to uh, not just domestically, but around the world makes a big difference. Trolls? Yeah, I would add, uh, our, our education system has, a, I think, a very strong focus on logistics-related careers, uh, be it at the technical college level, the four-year college level, even at the, the master's PhD level. Uh, we produce very, very strong talent for that industry, or, or for this industry, I should say. And the, it is, it, the talent is produced everywhere around the state. You know, Georgia Southern has a very strong program. There is a great technical college programs all over the state of Georgia. So really, wherever you locate, you're going to find uh, strong talent and I think that really does set us apart because we, we can deliver everything from maintenance technicians to a distribution center or a, a manufacturing facility to some of the most advanced PhDs offered in the world in in supply chain management at a place like Georgia Tech for example Clayton State has a great program it's just very strong in, in that region in that area 
things. Right. You know, even one other point to, to add to Troll's uh, statement, even those soft skills count. Uh, we hear that a lot. You know, you want to have somebody who's reliable, and you have to prove that with uh, industry visits. When companies come visit your community, they want to talk to other industries or the companies in similar industry that are, industries that are around that area. Soft skills always come up. The ability to come to work on time, the ability to, you know, uh, uh, pass a drug test, the ability that if you get paid on Friday, yeah, you got to come to work on Monday and Tuesday. So, you know, we've got to, you know, you know, factor that into the equation as well, especially for logistics and distribution, you know, the boots on the ground that are actually in those warehouses. I'm going to come on down here and so I can get some questions from Janine, if I may. Thank you. Switch places over here. Switched up. <laughs> All right. Looks like uh, one of the more um, interesting or uh, questions that has some interest is it's obvious that there's a great momentum with economic development in the state of Georgia. The congestion on our roads and lack of investment with road infrastructure appears to be the biggest hurdle to maintain the momentum. What is being done at the panel's level to support improvements with highway investment? I'd be happy to take that. I, you know, I, I think that. One thing that I think people oftentimes ask about congestion, there is no question that there is congestion in some parts of our state at some times during the day that need to be addressed. And what we have done in the state of Georgia as a result of the courage last year uh, for our, from our legislature and, and the, the support of the governor is pass a transportation bill that's gonna provide for $10 billion worth of new uh, transportation money over the next 10 years. So we have identified the problem, we have planned for the problem, we are funding the, the, the solution and we're executing on that solution. So one of the things that I talk about with companies all the time and our team talks about is transportation in the state of Georgia is a strength. Again, when you have the ports, when you have two class one railroads, when you have the road network that we have, uh, it, it's second to none. We also recognize that there are problems and the state of Georgia is actually doing something about those problems where a lot of states are still talking about it. So I feel that we all should be very, very proud of what we have done and, and the future looks very, very bright. In fact, we had a, a prospect uh, that told us that, that one of the biggest concerns they had was congestion in Metro Atlanta. And they said, you know, having come down, talked to you five years from now, you guys are going to be way ahead of so many of your competitors because you're doing something about it rather than just talking about it. So I think that's something to be proud of. Very good, thank you, Chris. <clears throat> now there's a, a question I have and then I'll get back to some of the other questions here. Uh, primarily for Chris and then others can contribute if you'd like. In what industries or sub-industries is Georgia best positioned for growth? In what parts of the state might that occur first? Sure. Well, I, you know, we're fortunate because we've got a number of different industries that we think we've got great opportunity in. Uh, one is automotive. If you look at where we are located in the southeast, and truly uh, the U.S. automotive industry has moved to the southeastern United States. We have Kia in West Point, BMW in, in, in South Carolina, and you've got VW uh, in Tennessee, and you've got Mercedes and Hyundai in Alabama. If you look geographically, we are right in the middle of the, the now the U.S. automotive industry. And we have over 250 automotive suppliers uh, that have moved to our state from all around the world. And so if you look at opportunities, there is no doubt, again, with the logistics network we have, that the workforce that we have, the opportunities you have in the state of Georgia, automotive truly is, is a great opportunity for us. Aerospace is another. Again, for the exact same reasons, if you look where we're located around the southeast and the opportunities that uh, are around in, in Alabama and South Carolina, state of Georgia, in Savannah, we've got Gulfstream, mm -hmm. uh, one of the great uh, aerospace companies in the world. Uh, we've got great opportunity there. Food processing, distribution, we've talked about. I mean, the opportunities that we have for logistics, so many different companies want to be here because of uh, how fortunate we are geographically, as well as the, the network that we have, uh, the logistic net network we have, we have invested in. Patrols also mentioned something, you know, the, the world is becoming very innovative. And if you look at the opportunities that we have uh, in this state from uh, an innovation standpoint, that could be cybersecurity, it could be health IT, it could be uh, mobility, uh, it could be financial technology, FinTech, payment processing, and enter entertainment. There are a number of different areas that we have great opportunities in, and they are all around the state of Georgia. Again, when you have a world-class uh, education, uh, higher education uh, system like we have, 
uh, when you have great public and private universities, when you've got a great technical college system, and when everybody is focused on what can we do to help the private sector be successful, uh, we've got great uh, opportunities in this state that I think are, 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 are very exciting. Very good. Anybody else want to contribute controls? Yeah, I'll, uh, speaking of, of innovation, um, Metro Atlanta and indeed the state of Georgia is a, is a true leader in the world in the realm of supply chain software. Uh, in this region alone, we have locations from eight of the top ten supply chain software companies, of course, including Manhattan Associates that are headquartered here. And, and by the way, is the, 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 the mother of all spinoffs. There's just, a, a, and, and literally so, there's a, quite a few companies that have spun out from uh, or have been started by Manhattan alumni over the past few years, and it's a really exciting thing to see. I think there's some statewide opportunity there with the Army Cyber Command locate, uh, locating in, the, in Augusta, for example. Cybersecurity is, is, is truly one of those uh, threads that go through every single industry. As, as every industry becomes technology-driven and technology-dependent, um, uh, the security of that technology becomes extremely important. And we have some assets in this state that are, that are truly unique that I think is really going to drive uh, and so, as the commissioner mentioned, uh, cybersecurity is, is one of those that are really going to drive some of the, uh, some of the, dr the growth in, in the supply chain space as well, uh, both on food security, but certainly also in terms of, of, uh, of the physical security of the product that are moving around. So. Okay. Thank you, Trolls. We have a question from the app that came in, and primarily, probably for uh, you, Stacy, and uh, anybody else might be able to jump in. It says, okay. around 2000, the Georgia Ports Authority uh, experienced phenomenal growth in its container traffic, surpassing the Virginia Port Authority and South Carolina State Ports Authority uh, in 2006 to become the second largest container port on the East Coast. What economic incentives and major development initiatives do you consider the major drivers of this growth? Um, that's easily our, our infrastructure. Um, our, our, our weekly services, our, our ocean carrier services, is something that we've built over the years. Back in the late 1990s, early 2000s, we were primarily an export port. And it took the vision of leadership at the port, the vision of leadership at the state, to see the bigger picture, okay? We are, we're an export port. We predominantly export Georgia's natural commodities. We export a lot of kale and clay. We export a lot of poultry. We export a lot of uh, cotton. Where's this stuff going, okay? It's going to Asia. How can we generate empty containers and import boxes um, in Savannah to support the export market? Okay, let's go market to retailers, all right? So once we did that, we worked with the Savannah Economic Development Authority at that time. Uh, they had just developed an industrial park called Crossroads Industrial Park, um, 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 which Home Depot was the first tenant, but we work with them on a daily basis. As a matter of fact, that was my job. I've been doing economic development for about 15 years. It was primarily work with local development authorities to attract or to create that buzz, to actually have that um, uh, import retail strategy um, um, spread out throughout the local community. We actually even worked with the Department of Economic Development at that, at that time. I'm aging myself, but I think at that time it was the Georgia Department of, of Industry, Trade, and Tourism, <laughs> before your time, um, to develop some creative incentives uh, through job tax credits. We actually, um, 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 the job tax credit, the port bonus, is actually an additional tax credit that a prospect can use to offset their corporate income tax by using the port, and we made that tax credit very simple to get. You had to use the port and increase your throughput by 10%, and you qualified. And since that time, there have been many other states, many other communities that have copied what we've done, uh, but you know they were too late. We already had that critical mass of, of retail import right around the port within close proximity. Even to the point now, other ports have been studying what we've done, and it actually has a name called the Savannah Model. And I like to say often imitated, never duplicated, and that's still the case. Very good, Stacy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And there's another question here on the app that's come through. What are your thoughts on the export-import highway that would connect I-16 and make into the Kia plant in LaGrange and redirect traffic, freight traffic away from Metro Atlanta? I think that is... Um, um, something that is definitely on the horizon. The bigger picture is that we are developing um, several inland ports around the state. I'm not the expert on the, on the rail side. We've got a guy at the port, his name is John Trent. Remember that John Trent, <laughs> if you want to talk to somebody about that. He is uh, uh, definitely looking at key strategic areas around the state. 
uh, to expand the reach of the Georgia ports. And that includes out to LaGrange, to West Point. Um, um, we recently announced we're building an inland port in Chatsworth, Georgia, Murray County. Uh, we're looking up in Northeast Georgia. We already have an inland port as well that is kind of a public-private partnership in Cordell, Georgia. So you're gonna see more of these as time goes on. Uh, and that's gonna be a game changer, a real game changer, as far as taking so, some trucks you know, off the road, we're at 3.8 million TEUs right now. We expect to grow to 6.5 million TEUs of throughput and beyond. You know, we've got to take care of, of, of those transportation needs before we actually need to, because if we wait until the time that it's, it's needed, we've waited too late. So we're looking into all those avenues of using more rail and getting that rail from the port out to certain areas around the state to kind of of capture and maintain our logistical advantages and the benefits of using the Georgia ports. Okay, thank you, Stacy. One last question on the app here, and I don't know how much you might be able to offer, but uh, what is the most common reason for companies that they give for not locating in Georgia related to logistics? <laughs> well, yeah, from, from our, uh, it, oftentimes a, a company does not select Georgia because generally it's proximity to a customer or to supply chain and, and, and at the end of the day we may have something that can be offered but there, there may be a unique circumstance right. that is generally the number one thing that we see and and uh, again oftentimes uh, we're very very competitive and 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 when you've been named the number one state in the nation which to do business three years in a row folks pay attention at least come and, and talk but there, there are times where we cannot pick up the state of georgia and move it to the west coast exactly. there's a lot of things we can do exactly. we That's just right. can't do that but, uh, but there are a lot of things that, 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 again, there are a lot of cost savings from being in the state, but, but generally if we lost it, it's one of those two reasons. Okay, thank you, Chris. Maybe the last question, uh, what, are, what new initiatives are underway that you can see coming in the next few years or are underway now that will impact business growth in the various parts of the state that you work in? Uh, that is a new initiative that we have at the port. Um, it is a high priority initiative that we have. Um, um, again, it's groundbreaking and um, it's a game changer. Also, you know, to, 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 to rehash something that I know a lot of folks in here have, have heard us talk about over the years is, is, is harbor deepening. Uh, we are the shallowest major container port in the world at 42 feet in, in draft, and we've had to be very creative over the years to overcome that obstacle. And I'm proud to say that we do have dredges in the water today, and we're deepening our harbor down to 47 feet um, uh, we've overdredged four of our berths down to 48 feet. Uh, we've had to bring ships in and let it sit at that berth and, you know, throughout the tidal fluctuation, bring the ship in on high tide, tidal fluctuation, low tide, high tide, take that ship out. That was a roadblock and uh, 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 we're taking care of that. That's, that's getting taken care of. Very good. Thank you, Stacy. Anybody else want to mention that? Well, um, I, I, will, I will mention or I will echo what Stacy said. Uh, about the uh, harbor expansion project, mm -hmm. the, the port deepening. Uh, you know, I, I think people outside the logistics industry, people inside the logistics industry often understand this, but just how symbiotic and important the Atlanta to Savannah connection mm -hmm. is. And it is, it is, I think it's a fair statement to say that without Savannah being successful in the logistics sense, Atlanta would be far less successful. And I think that's a, that's a really, it's really, really exciting to see all the investments going in between the harbor expansion process, or excuse me, project, uh, the transportation bill that's being put together, that, that has been, that's being implemented at the moment, um, that, that we are making the investments that are necessary to keep commerce flowing through the state of Georgia. And Chris, I don't know if you'd want to come in on this, but I remember you giving a story about, uh, I think it was Mercedes-Benz and their location decision. They wanted to locate next to the airport, near the port, to have access to both of them and to their manufacturing facility. But what was something that really made a critical uh, decision for them? And it had to do with, I think, quality of life toward the end, once you had all those other logistics items in place. That, well, that's right. And I, again, if you look at where we're situated, where they were looking, uh, they needed a number of different things. One, to build the business case, which logistics was critically important. So was, ac again, access to Hartsfield-Jackson International Airport being close to their manufacturing facility, the relationship that they had had with our ports was critically important, but so was quality of life. 
And when they looked around the, the, the uh, other two areas that they were looking, the state of Georgia, they said there's just a different experience here in the state. And, and to answer the, the question, the innovation, I'm going to take a little bit of a different approach. If we continue to grow the Georgia economy, then the logistics industry is going to continue to, to prosper and thrive as well. And the number one thing that we can do is continue to focus on workforce. And what the governor's done is two things. One is to make sure that we continue to focus our efforts with the private sector, creating a pipeline of communication between the private sector and workforce developers, our university system and technical colleges. He has done that through what we call the High Demand Career Initiative. And again, very simple, just create a pipeline of communication so we know what companies need to, to continue to grow. But the second thing will be K-12 education reform, and the governor is going to take that up next year. Tomorrow's workforce is in today's classroom, and there's nothing more important than we can do to continue to build that pipeline, to build that, that infrastructure between higher ed and K-12 to make sure that companies will have uh, what they need and every company in every industry needs a trained workforce. And I think investing in that will ensure Georgia's uh, economic success and then again the logistics industry success as well. I agree wholeheartedly. And you've heard that uh, economic development is a team sport and in Brant's case it's even a family. Uh, uh, impact, so it's very nice to have that. And these panelists have done a great job. Join me in welcoming and thanking them for being here today.